farming simulator and maypole farm and I'm just going to quickly run through the contracts that I did between episodes so I did say in the last video that I did a bunch of contracts and so on the screen now you will see me scrolling through those there was a cultivating contract that we got back two grand for um, there was a plowing contract that we got 8,754 because we had to lease the equipment and then there was the big baiting contract that we did that we got £23,000 for and a nice bonus stack of I think it was 19 bales so the hay shed is looking significantly better and because of that we're going to go and get ourselves some cows um, so I did say that I also did a harvesting contract but that harvesting contract uh, I completed it I then saved the game and reloaded and because of that we lost the progress which was ever so slightly annoying but you know not the end of the world and I'm not going to worry about adding any of that back so I will see you up at the animal dealer where we're going to lease a trailer and then get ourselves some cows and here we are so yeah I am going to use store deliveries to get the animal trailer delivered to the animal dealer kind of like we're leasing it off them I guess um, I am recording this bit live uh, I have a chance to so yeah we'll uh, we'll get this bit done live I think we'll just go for that it's 1200 pounds to lease plus 30 pounds to have it delivered and oh, that's going to be slightly frustrating and we get the fear in front of it. Let's try. Let's try before we resort to super strength. What we'll do is we'll use the front loader, pick up the hitch, and move the trailer a bit. Yeah. We'll simulate that anyway. There we go. Oh, yeah, that was all done with the front loader, perfectly placed on the all hit the the, uh, the hitch of the trailer, and uh, not at all me just pushing it around with the tractor. So, do we have a cover we can open. Not that. Not that. Up. We'll just leave the cover in place. Might need to unfold it to get it to open the trigger. Not used this trailer before. And because I'm doing this as I'm playing, you might be getting some keyboard out. There we go. So we are going to go for Holsteins. And I think we'll go for the 18 month old, I think we can afford that. 18 grand for the first load. We might have to get some that are a bit younger, but let's fold the ramp up first. And head back down to the farm, which is not too far of a drive actually. It's quite nice. And the field that I harvested was field 25 which is just the other side of those trees um i dropped the straw because i was going to collect the straw from it but yeah saved the game reloaded and all of that vanished but not a massive problem but slightly frustrating um, we would have had a couple of thousand extra liters of wheat as well but it was mostly about testing those setups and you know we've, we boosted our cash up from not very much to 50 grand so you know can't complain too much it is letting us buy the cows i am getting some lag which is uh, not awesome but oh well so i'm just going to do the getting the cows live and then we'll get into a more normal video because i'm really not sure what I want to do today, I can't decide whether I want to do some more contracts or whether I want to 
push forwards to October and harvest the beets. Obviously we need to feed the animals as well. Please let me select more animals. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm confused. Select. There we go. Move task. E. So we need to do four more loads of those, which I don't think we're going to be able to afford. Maybe we will do one more load for now, another load in a few more months when we've got some cash. Because that is the joy of playing on a hard mode, and that is why I did a bunch of contracts off screen. So I'll see you back in the animal dealer. What I thought I'd do is turn around here first and then back in to the loading point. I thought that was more sensible. Um, and then we'll see and work, work out what we want to buy for the next batch. It's going to be Holsteins again. Um, come on, let's fold the trailer down. There we go. Not quite. There we go. Uh, so if we do a full load of Holsteins, it's 18 grand, so we can afford uh, only one more of those, or we can afford two loads of the 12 month old, but we've got to wait six. I'm going to get one more load of the 18 month olds, and then I think in October, we'll do some contracts to earn some more money to buy some more. I think that's sensible. Uh, we do need to sort out a straw blower. You uh, put some straw in before their bedding, so yeah, we should save some cash before that. I'm going to reset store deliveries before I forget, and um, because I have done that before, and we'll end up delivering whatever we are buying to the animal dealer, not the store or the farm, wherever we want to send it to. So, yeah, I'm I think probably we'll skip ahead to October after this and get into doing the sugar beet harvest. I'm recording this before you've seen the last video, so I haven't had the answer to the question about workers yet, so I'm just going to wing it. Um, probably do what I did for the potatoes and do it myself. Um, or I might skip forward to October and see what contracts there are to start the day. Um, I would like to test some more of the harvesting setups that I've got and maybe some of the others as well. Um, so yeah, what I am going to do is put them in the other pen. Uh, just to spread it out a bit. Make the farm look a bit more alive, which it already is. Which is quite nice. Right, let's unfold the trailer. And while that's doing that, I'm going to have a look in animals at what this costs. So that's the front loader. I think there's, isn't there one of these that goes on a three point? That doesn't look like a three point option. No, it was a different one, wasn't it? So we probably want that one. Um, yeah, it's nice and cheap. It's only two grand versus some of these others, which are in the thirties. So, we're going to move all of those to the husbandry, close that up, and then we will return the trailer and I think go pick the straw blower up from the store. So, I'll see you at the store. So we're just coming up on the shop complex here, and uh, I thought I'd mention this, I'm recording this on Thursday. And uh, Maypole is back on the testing list. So I have that version. Um, I haven't added it yet. Um, um, so we'll be having a look at that soon. Uh, hopefully it goes through testing fairly smoothly. 
Um, I've not found any issues with it when I've been playing on it, so yeah, hopefully that all goes well and you guys will get the updated version soon. Uh, the lag, I think, is where I've updated to 1.7.1 and then not played on here, so it's having to reload a bunch of the assets. But let's get that returned. So now we're returning it to the store and we leased it from the shop. It's going in for servicing or something. Let's go with that. So we'll just make sure the reset, the buy point's been reset. And then we want this one, the front loader option with hydraulic hoses. I kind of like the default color, so we're just going to buy it as is. £2,800. I think it was quite light as well. I think it said it was 150 kilos, which is pretty nice. By the time it's got bailing, we might still need the weight on the back, but yeah. Oh, I think it's more designed for round bales, but it should work with square bales. We'll have to make it work. Uh, if you've not used this before, if you're new to FS, uh, this was around in FS19, and you actually get a bale spike in there as well, which makes it kind of nice for loading the bales up. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get this back to the farm and we'll get the animals bed in and fed and then I think skip ahead to October. And we'll see you at the yard. So we've made it back and I think we're going to start off with doing the straw. So we select the warzy, we disconnect it. That gives us a bale spike. I'm going to pick up the rear weight because I think by the time we've got bale in we might be a bit heavy. just grab that we'll uh, grab a straw bale and I have absolutely no idea where the straw trigger is so well we'll learn where that is I guess um, see we've got a nice selection of a bales in the shed now and I missed there we go So you, you can attach this from either side of the blower. Well, three, from three of the sides of the blower. I think it's obvious which one you can't attach it to. Um, or you could in FS22, FS19. Right. Drop that off. Hopefully that's gone in. There we go. And then we'll try and find where the straw trigger is. There we go. And I think that will actually make quite a good thumbnail. So this is um, Pro Shop, which I used to get my thumbnails. So I'm going to grab that as a potential thumbnail. Um, it goes really laggy on this computer when I turn Pro Shop on because I turn the game uh, graphics up. So you, within Pro Shop, you can turn the uh, the quality settings up. Uh, okay, so they're going to take quite a lot of straw by the looks of it. So I think now is a good time to go to my more normal way of recording. So future me will be back with you when I have got these cows bed down and we're doing some feeding. In fact, it's not future me yet. It's still present me. Crash count is definitely much higher as I talk whilst I do things. Yeah, so, disconnect the whole thing this time. Grab our regular bales bike. And I think I'm gonna have to take down three bales off of here, but I actually want to see what we can do. Certainly don't want four. Basically, I just want to give them enough hay to last the night. I think probably, depending on the state of our grass field in the morning, I will consider doing a silage contract tomorrow, next game day, next game month, um, because that is one of the setups that I haven't tested yet, and it would be good to test it, and we could do with some silage. 
And then we'll need to get a feed mixer. There we go. Look at the right shed. Yeah, that's enough. I can't imagine that fewer number of cows will use an entire bale of hay overnight. We're not paying the maze plus, are we? Yet. So that's the cows all fed. So yeah, I am going to uh, park up in the shed for the night and I will see you guys, future me, will see you guys in the morning. And here he is, not very future because some of this stuff is, uh, is being recorded quite close together. Um, like I finished recording the gameplay footage an hour ago. Right, two hours ago, something like that. Anyway, we are going to harvest the um, sugar beet. That word just completely left out and jumped out of my brain. I was about to say soybeans. So I'm going to drop off the bale spike and the rear weight. Not taking the front loader off because that would be a pain. Disconnecting all those pipes and stuff. And then we're going to make use of the, obviously the KS6B that we have leased and then we can return that which will be kind of cool um, not really sure what the leasing costs have been but I guess I, I can't really tell because I've got the seed air and the roller on lease as well oh well it, uh, it is what it is we uh, we'll hopefully make some money off selling some of those so that is kind of cool I end up using a worker quite a lot and as I said I haven't yet, in fact now the video is live where I ask a question about workers, um, but I end up using a worker quite a lot and it seems to cost quite a bit which is uh, not fun when we are quite so poor. Um, the other thing that I end up looking for later on is a field with some corn in because uh, at some point this real world month we will be adding maize plus into this and having some corn silage would be useful but what i might do is actually do a a feed setup that doesn't use corn so we use a mixture of um just dropping the potato header off so we use a mixture of hay grass silage maybe a bit of straw and then some of the other things that maize plus brings in that if you're familiar with it from fs19 or you've read the pdf you will know so things like molasses some of the sugar beet or the potatoes we'll definitely be making use of those um, yeah but there are options so we could go down a route where we don't actually need any maize silage but let's get the sugar beet header on let's remember what they're called and um, yeah the yield some some bits of this field the yield is actually pretty good some bits of the yield is abysmal um that does make it easier because there's the um the harvester, which sounds like a milk float, doesn't fill up quite so quickly. Um, I guess that's the hydrostatic drive, I assume. Yeah, it does sound a bit like a milk float when it's under load. Um, but this, this is one of my favourite root crop harvesters. It's why I use it a lot. Um, I should probably branch out, and I did use on Greenlands, I did use the big... Um, it's the modded, modded one, the Grimmy one that Giants released. Um, so it's the one from FS19. I did use that to harvest potatoes, and it was kind of cool. Um, but ultimately, it has the same working width as this. Uh, yeah. So I, I've not looked. I assume this is based on it. I think it's based on a real sugar beet harvest. I really need to have a look on and see. Because I do use it rather a lot. Um, yeah, and this is rather a long video, as you will have seen maybe when you clicked on it. That is because of that long intro. And I wanted to get this field harvested, so... Yeah, enjoy it. It's kind of a bonus-length episode. It could have been significantly longer, but I ended up cutting out a fair bit of footage. So what I'm doing here is uh, I want to open up a decent-sized headland on each end of the field, but because this thing turns like a battleship, I'm just putting a couple of short runs along the long edge so that I can turn to make the headlands. Uh, because otherwise there is no way I am turning this thing around in, you know, in just the grass headland. Not a chance. 
Um, the other cool thing, and I don't remember if I mentioned it at the uh, while I was talking before, because that was a whole day ago and I have slept, um, is the grass field is also ready, so probably next video we'll be doing some grass silage. I think I'm going to have to bale it because I think I can lease a baler and a wrapper and a mower. So I don't have any of those cheap enough that I can afford to do that rather than a mower, a loading wagon and building a silage clamp. I don't think we can afford that yet. So we definitely think we're going to be doing grass uh, silage bales on here. I don't think we can afford to put a pit in, which is not a problem at this point. Um, assuming that so we've had one set of comments from Hungry Dad Adam on the whole worker thing assuming there are a couple more positives I'm going to go for that and we'll have a couple of workers on the farm for the next video and I am going to get those guys out contracting uh, there are some seeding contracts there's a seeding contract that's cropped up and I need to test the seeding setup so I'm going to do that one there are a bunch of baling contracts, but I don't think I'm going to do those because we're going to get a lot of bales off of our grass fields. I'm not worried about that. Um, I do need to... So I have fixed, I think, the... When I was doing the baling with the Fiat, I struggled for horsepower. It should have enough looking at the power requirements. What I've done in that contracting setup is changed the engine option to the turbo version, which adds a fair bit of horsepower. So I want to test that, but I might just do that as a separate test. Um, I think there were some other contracts cropping up, so I do want to test those. There are some harvesting contracts that use the uh, maize or corn or sunflower setup could do with testing one of those at least and maybe one of the bigger harvesting setups where I get two combines um oh we're full so yeah and having to the problem with it if I had two combines and that would take up both workers so I would have to be carting and I would like to try and have contracts running in the background whilst I'm working when I don't need the worker so I can do the do our grass work on my own um, while those guys are off earning some money for me that's kind of the plan um, and that way I can avoid using the loan. Because that's kind of just a buffer. I think I said it was going to be a 10 grand buffer if we get in a really dire situation. So yeah. The other thing, in fact it comes up later, because I talk, and I, I'll talk about it again then. I'm switching to three day months. Um, and I'm going to stick it out. I was just watching Mr. CDP's Griffin Indiana video. The second one where he's talking about doing the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick it to three day months and play on times three. And I'll speed up time as I need to then from there. Um, mainly because as I say, at some point this month we will be adding Mates Plus in and that is significantly better on at least three day months because otherwise you're going to have to feed multiple times in a day with cows and that is going to get frustrating. So yeah, going to three day months should mean we feed once a day hopefully um, and it's also good because I'm not going to increase the number of cows we have at the moment until we've got that and I know where things are yeah, first load of sugar beet in the trailer these are going to be tipped in the crop storage shed and um, that is going to mean that we're going to need to sell the sugar beet first um, because they'll be in the way of everything else but you know life with not much space we could have tipped them on the ground out here i guess next to the last cow barn but i'm probably going to use that for bale storage for the silage bales um the other thing that i'm thinking is that there are some i'm thinking of yeah i did the video on adding straw to other crops i'm thinking of adding in soybean straw um, and there are some soybean harvesting contracts so we can get some more straw because we're probably going to need more straw um, so I think October is going to be a pretty busy month because we also need to plow our fields uh, and replant them. So yeah, it's going to be a lot going on. It might be that this turns into a few videos and probably some contracting in the background and between episodes, kind of like I did between this video and the last one. Um, hopefully you guys are kind of cool with that. So we will see. I am have decided that I am just going to talk over the time lapses because the time lapse in this is quite long. They are recorded probably too much footage. It would have been, I think, a 50 odd minute long video, which you might have liked watching, but I wouldn't have liked commentating on. So yeah, um, 
there's a fairly hefty time lapse now to uh, get most of these sugar beet harvested and so i ended up you basically see the process here the uh harvester pretty much fills on an up down row on the field at this point so basically i unload go back to the field reload repeat i did decide to do a little bit of harvesting myself because i kind of got bored of just watching the harvester um, but yeah literally two rows and you can see we are you know 80 90 percent full already so yeah the, and with a with a trailer that only holds 12,000 liters we're pretty quickly filling up and uh then i end up playing catch up with the carting work which is kind of frustrating um but yeah it, it's i guess it's life when you're dealing with small equipment and small trailers and stuff like that and a single trailer i guess that's the other thing you know probably with root crop harvesting you'd have more than one trailer and you'd have someone actually in it carting for you i could have set up auto drive but i'm not sure how well auto drive handles tipping into sheds i don't think i've ever tried that i did actually i've done it with the i've, I've done it with the i think i tried it with the um sugar beet harvest on greenlands and i can't remember if it worked or not i'm probably gonna think that it didn't anyway let's go to the next trailer full and then we're gonna to have to empty the harvester out again you can see the shed is getting very full with uh, our three crops that we've harvested it would be nice if we could add a silo but i think it will be a while before we can afford that and so yeah now just into regularly using the worker um emptying the harvester on this run and then while he comes back down i go tip basically and for most of the field i was getting enough in the trailer that i needed to go and tip until we get right across to the far edge and then the harvest just plummets it seems like they uh whether it's something with the uh with how precision farming was set up but it just seems that there was no nitrogen on that part of the field so the yield is not great and we're gonna have a fair bit of work to do to get these back into decent shape probably both fields are going to need liming plowing they need nitrogen um, we're starting to get a little bit of manure but nowhere near enough that it's worth thinking about a manure spreader um, i think we have that's interesting hopefully that weird graphic glitch doesn't make it into the final render um yeah i think we had about 2,000 liters this morning so really not enough to think about fertilizing a field i'm hoping that and we're not going to get another cut off the grass i'm hoping that through the winter we'll get enough that we can fertilize the grass field in the springtime or maybe you know like yeah very early spring get some slurry or some manure on there and but yeah i think at this point i'm going to call this shed full um there are some corners that we could put stuff in but that would mean using a you know having had a bucket and a loader or a belt system and we don't have either of those so we have yard space and you know, sugar beets will be okay outside you know, kind of just there where we were looking and that was where i was originally thinking of putting a silage clamp but we just can't afford one um yes yeah, so anyway, we went from comfortable on fifty thousand pounds down to i think we end up at less than eight with all the worker fees um and the fact that we've brought cows and the uh straw shredder um so just having a look now for plowing options because i do need to plow both these fields so it's between the agramaz which needs 160 horsepower um, and the Ag eco Mat, which needs more i need to double check whether i'm still having issues with the fiat and plowing but if not we're looking at leasing something maybe like a 7810 um but that's going to cost us five grand to lease which we can't really afford um so yeah that's kind of an issue um the other option is the one that I'm using for the larger plowing contracts, which weirdly is a medium tractor, um, which is the Traction King. Um, that's much more reasonable to lease, uh, or should be. The, the, the tractor's 30 grand less. So. Um, I am going to have a play around with some mod options and see if there is a plow that works with the fit. I'm sure when I tested it before it worked, but you say I tried it with a contract on here and it just was doing this the whole skipping in the field again um, which is kind of frustrating so yeah uh, 
I don't want to get rid of the fear because it's really good for everything else. It's done the seeding okay. I'm sure it will mow okay. In fact, we've used it on a mowing contract, so it'll be okay for that. It's okay on the baler. Um, if it's just one job it can't do, I'm not worried. You know, we'll uh, we'll find a way. There will be a plow we can use. Maybe I need to have a look at what the effects are of a plow versus a subsoiler, and I can't remember if I have stones on. Um, and we might go for a subsoiler. I think we're going to end up with weeds. Um, I'm pretty sure I have stones turned off because I loathe them. Um, and that might be the way to go. We can maybe get a subsoiler that will run on the back of the fear. Um, and say thank you to the patrons and the YouTube channel members. We do appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Slowly increasing in numbers, which is kind of cool. And I still find it really weird. Um, but yeah, thanks guys, it is appreciated. So you see now, we've got a reasonable pile growing out on the uh, the yard here. Um, it's going to suck loading all of this into the back of the trailer and carting it to the store. I think we're probably looking at selling maybe eight trailer loads of sugar beet and most of the potatoes. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of carting. That might be an auto drive job um, with one of our workers quite possibly don't have anything set up with auto drive on here it's uh, it's one of those mods and it's why it didn't make it into my favorite mods list it's not a mod that i instantly jumped to using um the the base game drivers are not awful for driving to a sell point um depending on how the map's set up but probably we're going to end up getting into auto drive or selling that depending on how far away the root crop sell prop root crop sell points are on here i'm not sure but the animal dealer is nice and close the store's tolerable although i am using store deliveries a bit um but yeah some of the others might be further away because it's you know, it's quite a well spread out map and it does make use of a lot of the map area for a standard size map um, yeah i've not heard how it's doing in testing um the at the start of the video I mentioned it was in testing and that was yesterday which was Thursday and today is Friday and hopefully I can get this thing finished and rendered in time for you to see it on Saturday it may be Sunday um, okay. this video is probably going to be a four hour render which means I might leave it to render overnight um, there might be a late Saturday video for you guys or Sunday morning we'll see, see how it goes um, there's one of the things I'm definitely missing about my newer laptop is render times um it would render a video like this in an hour and a half probably um and i would have the benefit that i could use the laptop that i now do everything on just to render which i was doing quite a lot and i could play on the new play and record and edit on the new laptop editing on this old laptop is painful i mean it struggles really difficult really a lot with kind of the real-time rendering as you edit well, you know, we've got another two to four weeks to wait and we should be back in full operation. Um, and long term, I'm looking at other options as well. So, um, actually, what one of the guys at work is, uh, is, is selling some stuff, but it's not the right time at the moment. So, yeah. Um, basically this this just turned into a a rinse and repeat process of unload like i said unload the beet harvester on the way up the field come and tip while it comes down and yeah get a decent amount of sugar beets off and part of the job we are now uh into you can see if you look at the yield map in the bottom uh bottom left hand corner we're into the bit of the field which is not yielding very well Plus of that, it means I can drive the harvester. Um, so yeah, I think it basically had zero nitrogen on it. Um, obviously that has hit the yield quite hard. Um, but we've got a lot of sugar beet already and it gives me a chance to drive the harvester, not just cart. Um, and we've got, I've got the trailer on standby. We might end up with more than a trailer full, but you know, we'll see there's only two more passes along here, I think, and we will be done. And then, yeah, I think probably next time we'll be doing some silage and I'll 
get some contracts running in the background to boost our income because we're going to need to pay to lease all of the kit that we need. We might even need to do a couple of contracts first to be able to pay for that. And I think a lot of the stuff that I have added in for the contracting setups is older and therefore cheaper. Um, probably going to be a single mower setup, I suspect, because uh, we don't have, I don't think we have the front three point on our Fiat. Um, so yeah, we'll be going for probably just the, the, the side mower that I used in the big contracting setup. Um, that will take us a while to get it cut, but you know, that's how it's going to be. Um, yeah, I, I, I would have liked to do square silage bales, but I think we're going to go round. Um, just because I don't think there were square silage bale wrappers back then in the... I think they were... May, they may just be... I might have to do some googling again and see when they came about. Um, if, they are, if they are, we can obviously save a little bit of money on renting a baler, which would be good. Um, so I'm just setting now the three-day months, um, so that'll take effect on the next seasonal change, which will probably be, might be next November, it'll be December when that kicks in, um, so November will still be a one-day month, but then December as we go into winter, we'll switch to three-day months. I think winter's going to be fairly quiet on here, mostly feeding the cows and pushing through to spring. I'm not going to do any forestry or anything like that, so we might end up just skipping some time if there aren't any contracts. Uh, which means we need to build up a bit of a cash reserve because we're going to have to pay the workers for probably three months of them maybe not doing very much. That's what 30 grand we're going to need to have in the bank to get through winter. Um, yeah, we need to bear that in mind. Probably this month and next month building up a cash reserve to pay for that. Um, yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is keep it on times one for now and I'm just going to play and some of it will be in videos, some of it won't be. That's the, the stuff we do on our farm will be in videos. If I end up doing a load of contracts to fill the day up, fill the month up, then yeah, that'll be probably... I'll show the results in the videos, I think, um, because I want to progress this series and I can do contracts in my own time. Makes sense? Hopefully makes sense. But I've got full harvester now and then a tiny, tiny bit of beet left in the field. Um, I think if I'd been on 1.9 hours, I might not have even bothered harvesting that last bit, but we're at 2.1 hours on the harvester, so we've paid for this hour already. So you might as well finish off the field. I don't think it's expensive to lease this guy anyway. Um, I think it, you know, it's only the whole setup was if to buy the whole setup with both headers is only about 35,000 so yeah probably something we will look at longer term uh, something I am using is and it depends how long this series runs I might I might only run this for a couple of game years um, if it goes longer could we progress you know and maybe in a few game years be looking at rather than 80s and 90s 90s and 2000s um, interested in your thoughts on that and if you would like to see this run longer than I think my plan at the is probably two game years if you'd like to see it run longer than that then uh, let me know um, I have some other ideas for things I would like to do and I want yet so that I'm doing no more than two series per you know two let's play series at once um, that seemed like a really nice number with Calmstone and Greenlands so yeah Obviously, our environmental scores are utter trash because none of the fields are in a good state. The uh, the grass field should improve. Um, haven't done any weeding on it, and we're just going to kind of ignore that bit. We're, I'm going to accept that it. it's not going to be perfect, but we've got good fertilizer and good nitrogen now. So, not good pH and good nitrogen. So we should be okay for uh, for that one improving. I'm just looking to see whether there was a weird collision causing that bump because the field looks fairly flat. I'm not sure might have a look at that uh, off recording if there's anything there that was making that harvester rumble around like that but that is all our harvesting done on the farm so we can uh, get this unloaded get it parked up uh, the store will come and pick up the low loader and the harvester for us and we can tip the last of the beets and see how much we got 
a reasonable amount. You can see that thick strip along the uh, the yield map in the bottom left hand corner of just poor yield. Um, this is a pretty good field. It's mostly uh, silty clay, I think. Mostly one of the good soil types. So yeah, should be doing a lot better next year when these are properly cared for fields and they have got our grains in them. I'm probably not going to do any root crops next growth year I think I'm going to have to split the big field that we've made as a grass field into two in, in the spring um, we can cut down some of the edges and you know, basically create a second entrance and turn that into two fields I think um, depending on how we're doing for the amount of grass that we need so uh, yeah I'll just have to see ultimately we're going to have to look at buying more land which means we need to earn more money which yeah we're going to be pretty busy, I think. Um, I guess it's one of the things of trying to balance playing on hard economy that crops really aren't going to be worth very much. I think I'm looking at maybe getting about 15,000 for the sugar beet that we sell and maybe 20 or 30 for the potatoes. You know, it's none, of, none of them are big amounts. Um, I'm not sure about the wheat. I think we're probably going to sell wheat. We want to keep it for feeding to the cows, but... Some of these things like the root crops and stuff is probably better value to use them as feed rather than sell them. Um, and so yeah, we're definitely going to be keeping a, a whole load of the sugar beet for that purpose. I might need to tweak the TMR ratio a bit so that we're putting in a bit more sugar beet. Ah, let see. See what it's like once we get going with it. And that is everything out of the trailer so let's get parked up and we'll quickly check the precision farming yield information let's close the door on the shed yeah, i do like this little size farm it's quite nice i'm enjoying it it's a bit of a mess i need to sort out that bag of lime that's just been sat there for quite a while I don't have any pallet forks um, we might just use the front loader to nudge it into the shed, I think. Just so it's under cover. And um, probably feels like a good idea to me. Um, so, yeah, 188,000 litres of sugar beet. And I am going to say thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button. Leave me a comment below. And if you are not already, then think about subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you next time.